we've been looking at partial fraction decomposition and what we found is that the the way that the decomposition works is uh, based on what the factors of the denominator are uh, specifically if the factors of the denominator in your rational expression are linear then you uh, do one thing and if they're of a quadratic form then you do another thing and uh, but we really haven't got into any of those details yet and that's what we're going to look at in this video all right in this video specifically we're going to be looking at uh, when your denominator has linear factors so linear factors uh, in your denominator we'll do quadratic in a in another video all right so uh, if your uh, denominator and your rational expression that you're trying to decompose into bite-sized pieces that are being added together in a sum if any of those uh, factors have the form ax plus b that's linear ax plus b to any power right squared cubed to the four to the fifth whatever but the factor itself is linear it doesn't really matter about the power uh, if the the factor is linear then this guy is going to contribute a number of terms to the decomposition now how many terms is this single factor going to contribute well that depends on the power uh, you see it contributes uh, m terms in the decomposition now what what's the difference in each of these terms well notice they each have a different numerator you have a sub 1 then a sub 2 a sub 3 a sub 4 a sub 5 up to a sub m so if your uh, exponent here for your factor is let's say uh, cube let's say it's to the third power then you would have three terms in your decomposition one with an a sub 1 one with an a sub 2 and one with an a sub 3 because m is 3 uh, and the denominators is is there any difference to those yeah there's a big difference uh, the initial term in the decomposition is just ax plus b then it'll be ax plus b squared and then cubed and then fourth and fifth and sixth powers depending on how high this exponent goes and so ju just keep in mind you're going to have as many terms in the decomposition as whatever this exponent says uh, and where each term in the decomposition's denominator successively goes up by one okay so just keep that in mind all right uh now just a couple just side notes here um personally what i call this this guy right here this contributed by this term in the denominator i call this the template of my answer that, that's going to be a helpful format because when you have this uh this template here the denominators are finished because we know ax plus b so this is done this is done this is done this is done but the numerators we don't know yet they're they're still mystery numbers i don't know what a sub one specifically is or a sub two or a sub three these a's in the numerator have nothing to do with this a this is, is just a, a coincidental similarity in in the letters that are used but a sub one might be five a sub two might be negative seven uh we, we don't know so all it is is a template of the structure of the decomposition not specifically what that answer is and, and we'll, we'll unpack a little bit more uh, about that later all right uh, another little side note is um, practically we don't use the notations a sub 1 a sub 2 a sub 3 uh, mostly because that notation is confusing formally we have to say this and the reason for that is this I don't know how high M is going to go um, so I can't exactly use the letters a b c d etc because that that assumes if we're just using natural letters you get up to Z and that's 26 uh, the, you know the 26 letter what do you do if M was 27 you know hypothetically or, or something like that um, you know so we don't typically write a b c in the formal sense like when we're explaining partial fraction decomposition but if I were to actually sit down and work a problem and the, the term in the denominator was you know x plus 3 to the fourth or something then I would use a over blank b over blank plus c over blank plus d over blank i would use an a a b and a c and a d like those type of letters once i actually know you know what the real uh, exponent is uh, but just in a, a theoretical sense we have to use these little subscript notations which don't work very well 
in, in a practical sense. So practically use A, B, C, D, etc. instead of A sub 1, A sub 2, uh, so on and so forth. Okay, so let me at least set up the template uh, for one of these guys. So here, here's a function that I'm trying to decompose. I'm trying to decompose this guy. And so this first step in decomposing an expression, or in this case a function, is taking this denominator and trying to factor him, right? Trying to factor this guy. So how, how does he factor? It would be an, an x and an x. Uh, you would have a, a what? A, it, it looks like a plus 4 plus 3, I believe. And let's double check that. Uh, x times x is x squared. 3x and 4x make 7x, and 4 times 3 makes 12. So I, I factored the denominator, and notice that these factors are linear, right? So that's, that's the important thing. So this guy is going to decompose somehow. So how is he going to decompose? Well, you have to uh, consider these factors separately. So let's, let's go through these steps uh, first, these steps right here. Uh, for the first factor and then we'll do it for the second factor. So every factor of the form blank contributes this many terms. All right, so let's let's look at this one. So x plus 4 is going to contribute how many terms in my long decomposition? I think just one, I think just one because it's just x plus 4 to the first power. So what will he contribute? Well, it'll be an a over x plus 4, okay? All right now, just hypothetically, not to change gears on us or anything like that, if this was x plus 4 squared, then we would have an additional term like b over x plus 4 squared and then cubed and then the fourth and then the fifth if it was even higher power than that. But if it was squared, you would just have these two terms. Mine's not squared. Mine's not squared. So I don't have the second term. It only has one term in the decomposition. It only contributes one term because it's to the first power, right? And that's done, All right? Now, uh, what about the second factor? Well, he looks similar. Um, he's not repeated. He's to the first power as well. So he's going to contribute a term with a denominator of x plus 3. Now, I can't use an a because this is already a, right? So I just have to choose a different letter like b or something like that. Now, I don't know what a and b are right now. We'll get to that in a moment. But you see how I did not use the subscripts? I didn't call it a sub 1 and a sub 2 and a sub 3. I didn't call it all those things. I just used natural letters a, b, c, uh, etc. So this is what I would call the template uh, for the decomposition of this rational uh, expression right here, this rational function. All right, now, now that that's done, now that we have our template, there's another big elephant in the room. How on earth am I supposed to find the A and the B? That, that's going to be important. Okay, so how do we find the A, the B, the numerator terms? That's going to be coming up soon. I, I'm not going to cover that in this video. Uh, that's, that's really a whole separate topic in and of itself. So for now, let's just understand when we get a rational expression, what we do is we factor the denominator and then we decompose it into a template of what the decomposition will look like. We should be able to write the denominator specifically with mystery letters, mystery numbers, and the numerator like a, b, uh, etc. And we'll look at how to find those coming up very soon.